And we have a lot to get to tonight, including the service of healing and gratitude that just wrapped up within the last hour and a half in South Lake. But first, we do need to get you caught up on the investigation into Saturday's hostage taking and standoff at Congregation Beth Israel Synagogue in Colleyville. I'm Brooke Katz. Doug has the night off. Tonight, we know the FBI and police around the world are trying to fill in the gaps about Malik Akram, the man who held Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker and three other hostage then died 11 hours into a tense standoff. We do know investigators are interested in his trip to New York's JFK airport and how he got to Dallas a few days later. He made it to the Our Calling home, homeless shelter near downtown on January 2nd. Now Our Calling is turning over video pictures from that night to the FBI. Investigators are also trying to figure out where he got the handgun that he used Saturday and if someone gave it to him at that shelter. Shelter. It's still an open question at this hour, but what is not is that this was terrorism related matter. Those are the words from the FBI because Akram targeted the Jewish community. Tonight, that community gathered for the first time since Saturday's standoff. Our JD Miles live at White's Chapel Church in South Lake, where the service ended just about 90 minutes ago. JD, bring us up to speed. Mm -hmm. Brooke, the Jewish community is known for its strong resolve, and it was on display here tonight. Just two days after a service at a nearby synagogue turned into a life or death ordeal, its members came together here to worship with only passing references to the traumatic events on Saturday. Among those arriving for this special service at White's Chapel United Methodist Church in Southlake, Jeff Cohen, who was one of the four taken hostage inside the Congregation Beth Israel Synagogue just down the street in Colleyville. It was not a lot of fun, but you know, we kept calm. We tactfully and tactically prepared our exit. There were also residents who live in the neighborhood around the synagogue, like Lisa Grossman. Oh, I'm so proud of Rabbi Charlie. I got love to pass out, came to just support the congregation. Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker received a warm ovation as he led the service with memories of what happened on Saturday still fresh in his mind. I love you all. And while very few of us are doing okay right now, we'll get through this. During a service that included traditional music and readings, the rabbi expressed his gratitude to first responders. I want to thank everyone in law enforcement and so many first responders who are there for us in our time of need. Along with those he was held captive with for the entire day until they escaped. A huge thank you to the three amazing individuals who joined me on Shabbat morning to pray in person and somehow together we made it through that traumatic ordeal. It's still unclear tonight when the congregation will be able to go back to the synagogue for worship services. The rabbi briefly came outside after the service here tonight. He thanked the media for its coverage, but did not take any questions. Live in South Lake tonight, J.D. Miles, CBS 11 News.